Hello, thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the analysis of two quantitative variables. Now remember that a quantitative variable is a meaningful number and it tends to have units with it. So what I'm discussing today is not appropriate for categorical data. So we're looking at just a simple scatter plot. And if you remember, a scatter plot has two quantitative variables that are represented on both the x and y axis. So here, happiness score, quantitative variable on the x-axis. And then we have our um, life expectancy, which is a quantitative variable and is on the y-axis. Now, this is a scatter plot, and each of these individual points are unique measurement for, these are actually countries. And so this is a country's happiness score and their life expectancy score. This is another country's happiness score and their life expectancy score. So these are two quantitative measurements on one individual or country or whatever it is that you're looking at. Now the other thing to remember with scatter plots is that the X and Y axis are representing explanatory and response variables. Now remember an explanatory variable is doing the explaining and the response variable responds to or changes based on a change in that explanatory variable. Now I always tell students it's really easy to remember which variable goes on which axis because this X axis is the explanatory variable. So it helps you to remember that the explanatory variable will be here on the X axis. And then the Y axis here, the vertical axis is going to be your response variable. Now, the next thing is when you describe a scatter plot, you want to touch on five different questions. So the first question is, is there a pattern? So if you say yes, there's a pattern, you'll continue with the rest of the questions and description of the scatter plot. However, if there's no pattern, you wouldn't describe the scatter plot because that wouldn't make sense. Now, some of the patterns that you can have would include linear or curved, it can continue on. Here, you can see that there is a pattern and it appears to be that that pattern is going to be linear. So for our first question, we would say yes. The second question, what is the pattern? Well, because you can kind of see a line forming here, and I did not draw that very well. And I can say that I didn't draw it very well because this line will be in between or the best representation of all of the dots that we have. So let's see if I can try again. Ooh, to lolly. That was pretty good. A little crooked, but you get it. So that's a linear pattern. So here we're saying, yes, there's a pattern. Here we're saying it's linear because we can see a line forming. Now, the next question we have is what is the direction of the pattern? So what is the direction of the pattern? Well, when you look at that, you have two options. You can have positive or negative direction. Now, a positive direction means that as the x-axis increases or you increase on the x-axis, the y-axis is also increasing. A negative pattern means that as you increase on the x-axis or the variables increase on this x-axis or the values, the y-axis or the variable on the y-axis is decreasing. Now you can see here, and when you read these, when you look for the direction, you're reading it like a book, so from the left to the right. As you can see here, when you move from the left to the right, as the x increases, y is tending to increase as well. So we would call this pattern positive because there is a positive relationship. As x increases, y is also increasing. The next question is how strong is the pattern? So really you wanna see how tight are these dots together? Are they really tight or are they really loose? The looser they are, the weaker the relationship is. The tighter the pattern around that line that we're seeing here, the stronger the relationship. Now, here I would say that this scatter plot has a fairly tight relationship. So I would say that this is a strong relationship. Now, if you're like me, I don't like being subjective. I don't enjoy looking at a scatter plot and trying to decide subjectively if that's going to be described as strong or weak. So in future videos, we talk about this measurement called a correlation coefficient or R, a linear correlation coefficient R, and it will help you to understand definitively how strong the relationship is. And then the final thing that you're looking at when you're describing a scatter plot is if there are any unusual data points or outliers. 
Now there are three ways that things can be outliers. The first way that something can be an outlier is if it's extreme in X. So essentially that means if we look at these X values, start here and they end here. I don't have any values that really are extreme in that X. All of them are kind of in that X range that the rest of the data is. Something that's extreme in X might be way out here in a place that you can barely even see, like right here. That would be extreme in X. So we don't have that, so that's not an outlier. Same thing when you're looking at the second way that something can be an outlier is if it's extreme in Y. Well, most of our data is in this area. And so I don't see anything that's really outside of that Y range. So I would say there are no outliers because none of the values are extreme in Y. Something extreme in Y might be way up here, or it could even be following the pattern and be way up here. Those would be outliers because they're extreme in terms of the range that we've already seen represented for Y. Now the third one, which is a little bit harder for people to decide on, is if a value strays from the overall pattern. So I always tell people, it kind of has to poke you in the eye. Like if you see something, you're like, oh, that's an eyesore. That's probably going to be an outlier. So here I would say, if I had a value represented in this blank space, I would consider that to be an outlier because it strays from the overall pattern. A happiness score that's really high, but the life expect expectancy for the country is really low. Now, these up here, we could maybe consider those outliers because they stray from the pattern, but again, it's subjective. I would say more if you had values that were in this area, you would consider those outliers. So even though these are a far away, kind of far away, like you'll have to start justifying to yourself, is that far enough away? This pokes you in the eye, definitely. This pokes you in the eye, definitely. These, definitely, extreme in Y. This, definitely, extreme in X. But these, because it's harder to tell, that would be a sub subjective judgment that you would have to decide for yourself. So this is a look at describing scatter plots. I have other videos describing scatter plots if you'd like a little extra tutorial. Otherwise, I'll see you in future videos to talk about the linear correlation coefficient R. See you there.